There's this Chinese dish called Ma La Xiang Guo. It's sort of a spicy Sichuan style stir fry. And for home cooks, it's great because it's a fantastic way to use up any leftover small quantities of like veggies, meat, whatever you have around. So I thought it would be perfect for the channel. And it is, but you know what? It turns out that its story has a lot of cool stuff to teach. This is part two of my series on the amazing food of Sichuan, one of China's big culinary families. This series is sponsored by Ming River Baijiu. Baijiu is China's number one distilled spirit and Ming River is the first brand bringing the authentic Sichuan Baijiu to people outside of China. More on that later, but now, Mala Xiang Guo. I would like to start this in a somewhat unusual way. So you know how Chinese food in North America and Europe is sometimes really different from Chinese food in China and yet people love it and sometimes they think that's what Chinese food is? Yeah? Okay. Hold that thought, because we will get back to it later. So a few years back, I lived in China for a while, first in Beijing, then in Shanghai. And whenever I was craving quick and easy Sichuan food, Mala Xiangguo was always one of my favorites. And so the way this usually worked is that there would be a huge selection of raw ingredients, you know, anything from veggies to tofu to meatballs, and you would pick whatever you want, hand it to a chef, and they would just quickly fry those up and smother it in this like, delicious, magical red Sichuan flavored whatever. It's actually kind of like hot pot without the hot pot and much, much faster and more convenient. So far, so good. There's just one thing, which is that if you ask anyone from Sichuan if they grew up eating mala xiang guo, they will probably say, no, that's not a traditional Sichuan thing at all. Wait, wait, wait. That means my favorite Sichuan snack is not actually from Sichuan? Let's investigate. Ma La Xiang Guo is a dry stir fry, meaning there is no soup or thickened sauce. Something like that does indeed exist in Sichuan and it's called Gang Guo. However, a Sichuanese Gang Guo dish is usually centered around one type of meat, usually chicken wings, rabbit, bullfrog, something like that. So the whole fun of choosing your own food is gone. The flavor can also be quite different. Aside from being spicy and numbing, they really don't have that much in common. But, and perhaps most importantly, this cooking style itself is more of a recent phenomenon in Sichuan and quite likely a result of, you know, just spicy food becoming more trendy in recent decades and Sichuanese chefs adapting more and more techniques from Hunan, that is one province down and yes, Hunanese cuisine is even spicier than Sichuanese cuisine and it features a cooking style called Ganguo or dry wok. So yeah, imagine that. Chinese food, just like any other cuisine, actually evolves and changes over time. Which brings me to the second part of Mala Xiangguo, the seasoning. In terms of flavor, it's actually quite similar to the intense, numbing and spicy aromas of a Sichuanese hot pot. So let's start there. Hot pot is not your quick meal. It's a social experience for a small group, often with more and more food ordered over the course of many hours. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Is there any chance we could have that, but like, minus the hassle? Well, yes you can. Unsurprisingly, there's a more street food friendly version of the popular hot pot concept. It's called Mala Tang and it usually features one big communal pot where everyone's ingredients are being cooked to then be served in like smaller individual bowls. You can slurp down that Mala Tang right on the spot or you can get it to go in a small like paper cup. The basic concept of Mala Tang has been around in parts of Sichuan 4 a long time, but it was only in the 21st century, so quite recently, that it made its way to other parts of China, in particular the north, where it quickly grew in popularity. And this is where things get interesting. I would argue that one of the things that made Mala Tang so popular in such a short time were these big buffet style displays where you could pick your own ingredients. Sounds familiar? Exactly. Legend has it that some chef in Beijing, of all places, decided to take the genius concept of self-service mala tang and then put his personal twist on it by fusing it with the equally trendy concept of, you know, the Sichuanese slash Hunanese gang guo, which in this case meant stir frying the ingredients you picked in what is essentially a spiced hot pot oil. And thus mala xiang guo was born and became an instant classic. So yeah, I am thoroughly confused. Is this Sichuan 
food? Is this not Sichuan food? Because it's definitely not Beijing food, is it? Or maybe it is. And that is what brings me back to the question about American Chinese food or European Chinese food earlier. Because you essentially have the exact same thing going on, but between different provinces within China. But yes, I know, I promised to show you how to make Mala Xiangguo at home. And obviously this is more of a flavor profile or a technique, because the first thing you gotta do is to decide what you want to put in there. Let me show you some of the classics that go especially well with Mala Xiangguo, but don't forget, there are no rules, this is a first class leftover recipe. Let's start with the proteins. You could use any meatballs or sliced meat, but I really have a thing for seafood in this, so I went for shrimps and squid. Of course, there are tons of non-meat options too, any kind of firm tofu, for example. Mushrooms also work really, really well. I'm using button mushrooms, but rehydrated wood ear or shiitake are also classic. Then of course, veggies. And for some reason, sliced lotus root seems to be almost mandatory. I love lotus root, so I'm not gonna complain. Then some good old chopped cabbage, thinly sliced waxy potatoes, and some green celery cut on a bias. Now we're gonna blanch all the vegetables and tofu for a few minutes, adding the longest cooking potatoes first, a bit after that the lotus root, then the tofu sheets, cabbage, and then towards the very end, the celery, just for 30 seconds or so. We want them to cool down quickly, so let's put those out on a tray. Nice. Now a lazy but completely acceptable way to get our flavor base started would be to use a one-to-one -one mix of last episode's chili crisp or even lao ganma and neutral oil. But you know, let's pretend I don't have those around for a minute. No worries, I got you. Just start with some neutral oil and add a basic Chinese spice mix. The exact ingredients are in the description as always. Fry those on medium heat until fragrant and then strain. Return the oil, take your wok off the heat and add a whole lot of de-seeded chili flakes. Stir immediately to prevent burning and let those infuse for 5 minutes. Now strain a second time, make sure to squeeze out as much of the good stuff as you can and this is an incredible Sichuan style clear chili oil. The color is absolutely stunning by the way, hold on, look, this oil is crazy red and full of well-balanced spicy numbing flavor. Speaking of which, you know what is also all about well-balanced flavor? This video's sponsor, Ming River Baijiu. In Chinese distilleries, Baijiu is aged in terracotta clay for several years. And each of these clay pots Baijiu has a little bit of its own character. So to make sure the final aroma is just right, there is a person called a master blender that actually tastes and mixes dozens of different baijus to create the perfect blend. What a life that must be. But with Ming River, the flavor blending doesn't even have to end at the bottle. To pair with Mala Xiangguo, they suggested making a Sichuan pepper daikiri. We start by chilling our glass with ice cubes. This should really be a cocktail glass, by the way, but I couldn't find mine, so... In the meantime, slightly crush some Sichuan peppercorns and add them to a shaker. Now, let's build our drink. First, some simple syrup for sweetness, then freshly squeezed lime juice for a sour kick, then 25 ml of dark rum, and finally 25 ml of Ming River Baijiu. Fill the shaker with ice, shake very well, strain, and this is a Sichuan pepper daikiri in a wine glass. You know, this is truly experimental stuff. Last time we had chili oil in the cocktail, and this time we have Sichuan pepper in a cocktail. So, cheers, my friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, 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 fruity, intense, but delicious. This one is very prominently sweet and sour, which I love all things sweet and sour, so this one's a winner for me. I'm surprised that it tastes even fruitier than our last cocktail, even though that one had passion fruit juice in it. So I actually think it's the floral aroma of this by Joe. Mm, good. I was wondering, oh, I was wondering if the Sichuan pepper is noticeable. Let me tell you. It is. It's this very mild tingling sensation around your lips, so I wouldn't even mind a little bit more Sichuan pepper in this drink. Thank you, Ming River, for sponsoring this series on Sichuan food. I agree, this Sichuan pepper daikiri will go beautifully with the mala xiangguo. Speaking of which, I'm getting hungry. Now to take this to the finish line, we start by adding our chili oil back into the wok together with one sliced onion. Fry until it just begins to brown and then add in a small handful of peanuts, crushed garlic cloves and some extra dried chilies for good measure. Season with sugar, salt and MSG and give everything a good mix. 
Almost forgot this one, by the way, fermented chili and bean paste, a funky essential for Sichuan cooking. Now we can stir fry all of our ingredients to absorb these delicious flavors and we begin with the uncooked proteins. This seafood will actually add even more of a rich aroma to the flavor base. Next, I added my mushrooms and then finally all the steamed veggies. Make sure there is no excess water on them. At this stage, I also like to add a touch of both light and dark soy sauce for extra body and then stir fry until everything is evenly coated and glossy. Now add everything into whatever bowl is big enough, then garnish with some sesame seeds and the herb that divides humanity, fresh cilantro. And this, my friends, is how you make an authentically inauthentic mala xiang guo.